practice today. Um, I'm Carrie, in case we haven't met before. Welcome. We uh, This class is being recorded live on a Tuesday afternoon that is really cold here, um, but sunny. So I'll take the sun any day of the week. We're going to start today's practice back on our backs and just let things, oh, Goodness, just let them start to settle. Drop your shoulders down from your ears. Close your eyes. Maybe sway your head a little bit side to side, or if you've got your legs long, maybe you do a little soft bend in the knees. Whatever gentle movements make most sense to you as you start today's practice. Our opening reading today is entitled Time for Home. Winter is the time for comfort for good food and warmth, for the touch of a friendly hand or a talk beside the fire. It is the time for home. We often think of winter as a time of coldness, grayness, and darkness, even if we live in a temperate climate. However, there's another way to look at this misaligned season. It's a time when we gather together to create our own light and warmth a time of holidays and special occasions. Many of our best memories are of cozy winter evenings spent with family and friends. I will enjoy winter getting together with those I love and smiling with their bright faces. Today's class is going to be about creating your own light and warmth. Creating your own light and warmth. So as you rest here on the earth, I want you to just envision a color. You can pick any color you'd like. And as you invite in a nice, gentle, soft inhale, visualize that color coming in through the nose and spreading down the spine throughout the body. As you exhale, watch as that color quietly and easily drifts back up the spine and back out through either the nose or the mouth. This colorful light is bringing us warmth, comfort, ease, helping us stay in this opening meditative moment that starts our Hatha practice today. If your legs have been long, I'm gonna go ahead and encourage you to add a soft bend in the knees and start to walk your feet up the mat. Reach the hands up and above the head, let them stretch in the opposite direction of your legs and just open and close the hands. Bend at the elbows and slide your arms to create a cactus shape. Knees will begin to sway a little bit right and left. So just some gentle spinal opening here. Right and left. Right and left. Just take your time. Now the next time those knees are back to center, let's go ahead and save them there, plant them there. Walk the feet, the heels a little closer to the glutes. Slide the elbows down so that they come towards the outer edges and then stand the fingertips straight up in the air. Kind of creating little 90 degree angles here. When you feel ready, we'll press the feet firmly into the earth and begin to lift those hips up off the ground. Now putting that gentle pressure into the backs of the arms, the elbows, allow your head to be relaxed. Your gaze is soft and gentle on the ceiling of your home, or maybe your eyes are even closed. Start to straighten the arms, lift the heels, and then exhale and lower down one vertebra at a time. Now the last thing that's gonna hit the mat are those heels. 
Soles of the feet walk to find one another. Hands reach up and overhead. Again, as the knees fall out to the sides and somewhat of a bound angle shape. Breathe easy and calm. Take your time to bend at the elbows, slide your hands along the floor, and then we'll stand the knees up towards the ceiling. Set those heels again gently behind the glutes and place your hands right on either sides of the body. We're gonna take a classic bridge again. This time, arms are down, hips lift up. Now, as you're in a bridge pose, always remember there's a little tension in your glutes, but nothing's clenched. You shouldn't have any kind of pain in your low back. Your legs should be somewhat relaxed. There's a little bit of pressure pulling those inner thighs towards one another. When you feel ready, the heels will lift up off the earth and then we'll lower down one vertebra at a time again. Last thing hitting the mat will be the heels. Soles and feet find one another, hands reach up and over the head, knees fall outward. Breathe. Slide the arms along the sides of the floor. Stand those knees back up towards the center. And then just begin to bring the knees in towards your heart. Maybe your hands come to the fronts of the shins or the tops of the knees and we just kind of rock around here side to side. And then we know all we need to do next is just switch some hand grip to the back of the thighs and elevate the feet towards the sky. Just simple movement here. Rolling the ankles, pointing and flexing the toes. Letting this all have a little bit of space. All right, knees come down. Let them go gentle towards the chest. Rock around a little bit, right and left. And then when you feel ready, we'll go ahead and rock this up into a seated posture, bringing the spine nice and tall. Head sways a little bit, right and left. All right, go ahead and walk those hands out to the sides of you, just turning to see you a little easier. And reach out to the sides. We're gonna take our right hand up, then bring it over and place it either on top of the head or let it reach slightly over toward the opposite ear. Hold this head, let it kind of drape down towards that shoulder. Now my hand that's out to the side, I'm gonna just let it have some easy movement. Maybe it's a small circle. Maybe it's just wiggling fingers. Maybe even try to offer to flip the palm up and then flip the palm down. All right, as you feel ready, release that hand up. Let it come down to the floor. Head comes back over spine, opposite hand lifts. Heads over towards opposite ear. And then just the gentle pressure of gravity brings that head over. Same thing as before, some easy movement. Inhale, bring the head back up over spine, fingertips reach out to the sides. Take a nice full shoulder roll, lift it up, and then let the arms settle down. Go ahead and play with those hands here. Just let them flip back and forth from palms up to palms down. And then we're just gonna build upon that and let those hands continue to flip 
up and down until we reach all the way up over our head. So it might feel a little silly, but lots of little movements here for upper back and shoulders, just start working it back down. And if it feels tight in the shoulders, bring your hands a little further out in front of you. we just kind of play. For me, my cervical spine, my upper back, my upper shoulders, my neck, really can benefit from this one. Hands then just move to rest at your knees. All right, let's go ahead and find tabletop. Wrists are gonna go under your shoulders. Knees are gonna go underneath your hips. I'm a little less than in love with the angle that I laid my mat at, at today, so I'm going to adjust it. If you've got blocks somewhere nearby, go ahead and reach for those, perhaps. Wrists again under those shoulders. I'm going to start with just a little easy wag of my tail from right to left. And then I'm going to start to move forward and back. So just take your time. Explore a little bit here on your mat. Let this place be your safe spot. Let this be the place you come for quiet. Where you're in charge, even though you're following a class, doesn't mean that you're not listening to that own inner voice. All right, let's try this. Next time you sit back, stay there. See what that feels like. Breathe in that light again. Watch it come in through your nose all down the back edges of the spine and then back out easy work we'll bring it back to table toes will curl under hips will lift up downward facing dog walk it out Right knee drops to meet the floor. Left foot lifts and extends back behind. We're gonna bend this left knee and just focus on a little lift of that left heel slightly up towards the sky. So what I don't wanna see is the big cave in your back here with a lot of pain. So think about just a slight upward pull right at the lumbar spine. So that stays nice and flat and you're really working where you're glute and your thigh meet. One more time. Extend that leg long behind. See if you can lift up opposite hand. Hold for three, two, and one. Hand comes down to the earth. These toes come down, push through heel, big calf stretch. Hold. Knee that's on the ground, we're gonna allow those toes to just kind of fan out slightly behind you so that you turn to the inner edge of that long extended leg. Right hand goes under face, left hand reaches up, gaze at the sky. And then see what you can do with this top arm. Maybe it feels good to circle it today. If the circle is too big, just let it come down and move up. Off and on, I've been kind of nursing a tricky left shoulder. So sometimes a circle motion for me is a little too big. So you just got to listen to your own body. Give it another breath. Beautiful work. Let's unwind from that. Hand comes down to ground. Take it down dog just to break up the monotony of that shape and walk it out. Left knee drops into the ground, right foot lifts behind. Right knee bends and we flex the foot as if we were trying to hold a little serving tray on the top of that foot. Now remember, we're pulling just slightly up through that lumbar spine. I know in my baggy t-shirt today, you can't really see that quick check I just did, but I'm trying to be focused on a little space right here in the lowest part of my spine not allowing my belly to droop and drop towards the earth. Give that foot, your thigh and your butt, that space 
A little more attention, one more time. If you're feeling pretty even, go ahead and extend that leg long. Bring the opposite hand up off the earth. Take that balance. Continue to breathe. Hand comes down to ground. Toe touches earth, push through heel. Spinning this foot towards its inside. We'll fan this foot lightly behind. Left hand goes out in front near the forehead. Right arm comes up. And maybe you take that circling motion again, or like I was doing with my left arm, maybe you just kind of paint the wall. Spiraling out of that, hands look for earth, downward dog again, hips lift up. Walk this out. Right foot's gonna lift to the sky. And then as you exhale, you're gonna bring your right knee towards your right elbow and then send it back up. Give me one more. Perfect, bring your right knee forward, drop it behind that right wrist, put your left knee down, just one breath in a pigeon. Curl the toes under on this back leg, lift the hips back up, downward facing dog. Left knee lifts, left leg lifts rather. Bring it forward, pause, take it back up. Bring it forward, pause, take it back up. Bring it forward, let it settle. Knee drops, toes drop, one breath. Toes curl under. Back up, downward facing dog. All right, friends, knees drop down into earth, hips sit back towards heels, hands come back towards the back of your mat. Relax. Hands begin to walk back forward, waking up from that short little break. We're back to a tabletop. From your tabletop, one big step forward with hands, hips lift high, down dog. And then feet walk forward towards your hands, first forward fold, reaching for a set of blocks if you'd like. Hang in that folded shape. Shake the head yes. No, and then find a half lift. So hands are either on blocks, maybe your shins, your spine gets nice and long, you exhale, fold. Plant the feet, big inhale, reach up, look up. Ah, I'm losing my head. Exhale, into <laughs> fold. Find a half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way back up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Sweep those hands back near your hips. Here's your warmth. Build a little heat. So hands are directed backwards. We're sinking down into those quads, feeling the warmth building in those legs. 
Inhale, breath, arms sweep up. Exhale, breath, fold into the earth. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back. Go ahead and spin it until it finds the earth. Start to bring this chest up. Think about a warrior one. Same powerful heat movement you just did. Hands sweep back, sink into that front knee. Let the heart feel open. Inhale, breath, hands lift up, hold. Exhale, take your time. Hands are gonna come forward. Spin on these back toes, drop that knee down, relax the toes into earth, and then just walk yourself up this front knee. Maybe you sink a little deeper into that shape. Now, whatever knee you have forward, you're gonna take the opposite hand, let it stretch up to the ceiling and take it slightly over. One more breath. Hands come down. Move forward towards front foot. Toes curl under. And you're gonna take this front foot all the way towards the front of your mat. So it can take a little step or a big step. Put yourself back in that forward fold. Shake the head, yes and no. Maybe add a half lift. Exhale, fold. Rise all the way up. Stand strong, hands lift, gaze up, hands to heart. Hands sweep by hips, sink back down. Build that heat. Feel the warmth in that chair pose. Thighs turn hot. Now the further you spread your knees apart, the less you might feel this. The tighter those knees are in together, the more force we put into those thighs. Hands rise, exhale, fall. Half lift, back down, left foot steps back. Heel spins and touches. Warrior one, hips directed as much as we can up the front of your mat. Take those hands back, just as you did before. Put a little more oomph, a little more bend into that front knee. Hands go up, hold the classic warrior one. Relax the shoulders down from your ears. Work on trying to flatten that front thigh, perhaps parallel with the floor. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Keep the core engaged. Hands come down, spin on that back toe. Drop the knee. Flatten those toes into the earth and then take your time. Walk up this knee, hips again, nice and square forward, maybe even sitting into that front knee. Right hand looks for a block perhaps, or just kind of hangs in space as we take the left arm up and slightly over. You can also just keep this arm rested on that knee. Come out of that shape, hands come down. Start looking for the floor. Curl the toes under. You're gonna take another big scissor step or a big step go here to the front. And then I want you to widen your feet. Your hip flexors might feel a little overworked. Go into a ragdoll shape. So just wide legs. Wag this a little bit right and left. Inhale, 
inhale breath is going to take us up halfway and we're going to pause there. I want you to slide your hands from your usual um, shins or block and bring these hands all the way up and look for your hip creases. Just see if you can put your hands in those. Pull the crown of your head out a little longer. Push that tail a little deeper towards the wall behind you. Really flatten your back. Then see if you can straighten your knees just a little more. All while maintaining that flat back. So anytime you lose the flat back, you need to put some bend back in those knees. Use your next natural inhale to come the rest of the way up. Hands stay at hips. And then just step wide. Keep those hands right at the hip crease. Your feet are both facing the same direction, off in a wide stance. Turn your right toes to the edge of your mat. Bend that right knee. Hands now reach wide. And I want you to think back to what we played with at the beginning, where you kind of were flipping your hands down and up. I want you to do that here in this warrior two. So you can even turn your gaze completely to the side and you just keep that bend in your knee. You're softening those shoulders. You're really letting that inner light into the chest. You might even work these arms all the way down. And then the next time they're ready, you're gonna inhale, straighten your knee once you've made it all the way down and let the arms go up. Exhale, let yourself sit back into that warrior. Let's try that again. Arms are up on an inhale and then they're back into your seated warrior. Exhale, last one. Back to that warrior. Elbow falls towards front knee. Turn this hand so that now the bicep can come touch near the ear. If you were to wave right now, your fingertips are pointing towards the edge of your mat. The design on your t-shirt is out in the middle of the room. Big inhale back to warrior two. Hands move to hip creases. Toes turn to the side. Fold right there in that hip crease. My feet are wonky. So I'm going to drop my hands to the ground so that I can straighten my stance out a little bit here. But if you're comfortable leaving your hands right in those hip creases, feel free. When you're ready, we'll come up. So you can roll one vertebra at a time or you can half lift it. All right, friends. The shoulders rolled out. Turn the toes on the opposite foot. This time your left foot, knee is bent. Arms start to offer out to a nice pretty warrior two, which is a bent knee, arms and teeth. And then you just kind of get to play again. Keeping that bend in your front knee. Probably feels a little silly in your arms, but you're really making your leg work in the meantime. Tension that's maybe in your upper back and shoulders is getting to drop down. We often get kind of tense when we hold that warrior two. So just play. The next time your arms make it all the way down, you'll use that inhale to straighten your front knee and reach the arms up. And then you've got three of these. You sink on the exhale. You rise on the inhale. So don't worry if your cadence, your speed is not matching mine. We're all listening to different music perhaps at home. So sometimes you move a little slower or faster depending on what's happening there. Elbow drops towards knee. Here we go, start to find that side angle again. Sink into that front thigh. Keep your design on t-shirt out in the middle of the room. I give you that design cue because it keeps you from doing this. Okay, this is so much more effective. Challenging, but effective. Really helping me open up that pose. Bring it back to warrior two. Hands move into hip creases. 
feet start to turn. This time I'm gonna check my stance before I fold. And then fold yourself back down through the middle. If you'd like to let your hands slide to your low back, that's an option. If you'd like to let your hands slide into a little bind or connection behind the back, that is an option. Again, as I was saying, I got that weird left shoulder. So I'm going to make this a little bit more conservative today because I'm going to listen to my own body. That big shape doesn't feel real great. If you like folds, there is a class in the content library about flipping upside down. I encourage you to take advantage of that one. It's a yoga flow class, but it does have a, quite a bit of inversions. Also a little headstand prep. All right, start to move yourself from that pose. Bring yourself up halfway long spine. Exhale, fold. Let's come up to standing, friends, all the way up. Let those heels turn in when you reach the top. And just give yourself just a breath or two in a goddess shape. Or cactus with those arms and some bent knees. Again, just watch where you're holding that tension. You probably notice a lot of times you see me kind of moving my neck or dropping my shoulders. It's because Little pockets of tension find their way into poses and it's important that you listen to that. Use it as a cue. Drop those hands down, straighten your legs out. This time, the left toes are gonna turn so they're parallel with that edge of your mat, your right toes. Just kidding. I'm trying to mirror you. Left toes, edge of the mat, right toes out to the side. Reach your arms, you're gonna take a triangle. So we did a lot of heat building with those chairs. Take advantage of that chair pose heat that was in your core. And your usual triangle is probably way down here. I want you to pull it up. I want you to just kind of have these hands as if they were like big sharks. Let them open and see what you can do with these abdominal muscles today. So hold that shape. It's a little harder, It's not something I really particularly enjoy. I'd rather collapse down into that normal shape. Use your inhale breath to sweep out of that. Reach the hand up overhead. Now you can have whatever triangle you want. If you wanna float down a little further this time, pulling that hip crease back, keeping that t-shirt design again, still out into space. All right, soften that, come out, reverse. All right, friends, switch your feet, check them. Parallel with the back of the mat or with a slight interning of that hip, if that helps you, over and then we take it, but then we kind of draw back. Make sure your chest is staying to the side Watching this, we don't want this top shoulder to come down and have this funky arm. See if you can think of that big sharp breath open. Use those oblique muscles, let them shake a little bit, let them feel alive, warm. Let the fire lights go ahead, lean back. Now take whatever shape of triangle you like. Excuse me. Maybe even bringing a block down into that shape. If I'm completely honest, this is my favorite version of triangle with a block, an active quad, a pulled back hip, a turned chest, a lifted arm, a gentle gaze, all those beautiful things. So even if that pose doesn't feel beautiful to you today, give it time. Continue to explore in it, because believe it or not, triangle used to be my least favorite pose. Yep, least favorite. Now it's on the top 10, maybe even top five. All right, spin that foot around. And then we're just gonna heel toe these feet. 
until they come back underneath of us. Depending on how slickery your mat is, that might be easy or difficult. Put yourself in the middle of the mat. Start to think about rooting through your right foot. Left toes are gonna come up on the inside edge of that right knee. You're gonna hold here in Flamingo. Arms can be down, can be straight out T wings, can be out in front, can be lifted up, can be flapping. <laughs> Whatever you like, give it another breath. Be playful. Remember you can laugh in yoga, it is loud. All right, bring your foot down, let it settle on the floor. Ankles move, toes move, anything that needs a little space. And then just repeat, opposite knee lifts. Flamingo. Hands are down. Arms are T. Out in front. Lift it up. Or flapping. See where you are. Hold another breath. Perfect. Foot starts to come down to earth. Ankles roll, toes roll, anything that needs a little attention. Now the next pose is just going to be based on quad stretch. So you can choose to take it as balance or walk to a wall, reach for a chair whatever you'd like to do for this next pose. We're gonna ground down into the right foot. Our left foot's gonna kind of kick back behind us. And when we take dancer, we take hand to the inside edge. When we're just gonna focus on quads, you can just grab on the outside edge. The one thing I want to watch, or would like you to watch, is that when you do this shape, you avoid this. We don't wanna pull it out to the side. You avoid this. You know, you're just trying to stay nice and centered. You're pulling that heel towards your glutes. Maybe your hand is on a wall or a chair just for a little extra balance and you stay put. Allow this knee to stay as close to your standing knee as possible. Watch your pelvis, watch your belly. Make sure those two stay square and rooted. Perfect. We're going to release this foot gently, and then I just want you to swing it all the way out in front. Back and in front. All right, let it go down and find the air. Separate the feet, walk the hips a little bit, circle them around if they need it, and then you're going to look for the other side. So just as you did before, you're going to kick this foot back. If we were going to dance, your hand would go on the inside, offering kind of a handshake grip. But we're just reaching right on the outside of that foot, getting a little grab there. Of course, if that grab doesn't come naturally to you, you might need to look for a piece of furniture in your home as a place to hold on for balance. You can always use a strap here, or we could skip that, and you could just be standing like this, with a bent knee, hand on hip. Watching that knee, keeping it hugged in close to your standing leg. And another round of breath, please look fantastic. Can tell some of you are using this as another balance shape. Some are using the wall. Good option either way. All right, slowly release that foot with your hand. Don't let it go flinging like a slingshot, just slow. And then forward and back. All right, feet go wide, big rag doll. Chest is heavy down through the middle. Shake the head, yes. And no. 
You can stay here and ragdoll for a couple more breaths, or if you feel okay with it, maybe you start to direct the heels towards one another, start to sink down into a wide knee squat. Let that have a little space to play. So either ragdoll or squat. Those of you who have found yourself in a squat, maybe you place your hands about shoulder distance apart, right out in front, putting just a little bit of weight into those hands, making kind of a crow prep. As you lift your hips up, you bend your elbows and just try to stack those knees right on the elbows. You'll feel, feel a little tension in your inner thighs, a little pull in of your core. Of course, if you're a little more advanced in your practice and you want to lift up off the earth into a full crow, of course, you can at your own risk. But preps can give us just as much sometimes as we might get out of that big shape in a full crow. All right, my friends, work your way back down. Find yourself to the earth. You can turn on your mat however you feel best. I'm gonna just face you. So it's visually a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. Right knee is gonna come in towards my belly. I'm gonna turn with my chest towards that right knee. Left arm might lift or right arm might lift. Spiral behind. Take a little twist. Unwind from that twist. Knee that's been lifted, we're just gonna send it out to the side. Looks like a tree pose, seated here, lift up and fold right over that hip crease down towards your toes. Trying your best to avoid that big arch in your back. So if you've got that, draw back up a little bit. Think about a flat spine and then just ease into this. This is not high school sit and reach. There's no metal, no competition, just a yoga class. Chest starts to come up, stand this knee up Send it long, opposite knee comes in, chest starts to turn towards that knee. Opposite arm might lift and spiral, that might feel good in that shoulder. Maybe turn towards this knee. Of course, if you need more space, you wanna elbow on the outside or you wanna move yourself into some version of a bind or whatever, go for it. But I'm good right here. And it looks like most of you are too. Unwinding from that twist, knee falls out and open to the side, hands are up, think about a long spine, and then just easy fold over that crease. something kind of funny going on in this hip. So I stuck a block underneath that knee. If you have something funny going on in your low back, you can stick a block underneath this knee. Ease your way into that space. There's always ways that we can change up these poses to make them work for us. Don't feel like whatever's happening on the screen has to be exactly the way you do it. And 
If something hurts, we don't do it. Bring the chest back up. Let this knee stand up. Let it go long. All right, beautiful work. Let's take our time to bend the knees. We're going to lower back onto our backs, taking with us any props that you might find handy. If you have a set of blocks handy, maybe take those down with you. When you hit the earth, let's take another round of bridge. Then that inner heat in the thighs today, another big stretch up the front side might feel really nice. So pull those heels in, make sure your knees are about hip distance, don't let them fall out to the side and keep them steady. Toes wanna to go in the same direction as our feet. Sometimes I see people start to turn their feet outward. <laughs> don't do that. Keep your feet in nice straight lines, keep your hips in straight lines. Imagine you've got one of those blocks between your knees. Stick it there if it helps. Hold for another round of breath. Taking your time, we'll start to lower down. Maybe a spinal twist feels good. And then if you want, you can take another round of that same bridge. Maybe this time a block goes underneath. If you don't have a block, just let the legs go long. Take a nice long body stretch. Maybe your arms go up overhead. Those who do have a block, perhaps with it there, you even do what everybody else is doing. You have that block under your back, but you make your body nice and long. Give yourself a nice front body stretch. Of course, if you've got any kind of pinching or pain in your low back, you can remedy that with one leg at a time or just go adjust this block because you might have it in the wrong spot. Those who've been long on the mat, take your time to slowly start walking your feet, your heels up the mat. Bring your arms back down towards your sides, lift up off a block if it's been underneath of you, walk your heels in close if you have no block. Right leg's gonna lift nice and high to the sky. See if we can bring the right hands, or both hands rather, behind that right leg. Roll around this ankle, point and flex the toes, and then bring that right foot over and place it just below the knee, or above the knee, whichever cue makes more sense to you. Rock this side to side, or maybe hug it in. Some just like to bring hands around the backs of the thigh, or maybe take one through the little opening you created in your figure four. Glutes, piriformis, low back, outer hips. Sometimes even between my shoulder blades gets a little stretch here. See what feels good in your body. Close those eyes. Or at least let the gaze get really soft on the ceiling above. And then we'll switch sides. Take your time. Opposite leg lifts just as you did before. Hands grab a little bit behind that thigh first. We roll around the ankle. And then bend this knee, foot comes over. Make your figure four shape. Maybe it leaves the earth and your hands go through the opening that you created and around the back of that thigh. Soften the gaze, close the eyes. 
this pose makes sense to you. As the shape starts to feel complete, we'll come undone. Feet remove themselves from one another, move them back to the earth. Walk your feet maybe as wide as the mat, let your knees crash land into one another. This is called constructive rest. This might feel really nice to your low back today. You can even walk your feet down the mat a little further and then let those knees not have quite so far to fall. That might feel good. You can walk your shoulder blades out. Maybe you'd like something more traditional, legs long. Or maybe you've had enough laying on your back. You can certainly move yourself to rest on one side or the other. I often tell you to rest on your right hand side, but if you've been told to avoid that, you can always lay on your left. You're gonna use these last few final minutes to close your eyes and feel the light. Feel the light that is shining within you. It might be bright, or it might be turned down a few notches with that dimmer switch. Whatever version feels nice to just feel the warmth, the ease of this final pose to let today's practice start to find stillness, to find ease. Final moments of every yoga practice are set aside for what is called savasana. This final resting pose is our time to just let everything sift and settle back into place. You've had time to physically move your body, to bring a little bit of quiet into your mind, through breath, and calm visualizations. Let these final minutes be what you need them to be, that safe space where everything has its time, has its space to settle back into place. Slowly starting to allow just a few gentle movements to come back. Maybe it's wiggling fingers or toes. Letting the nose easy sway from side to side.
Maybe begin to bend the knees if the legs have been long and bring those knees tight into the chest. Common suggestion is to roll to one side or the other, resting in somewhat of a fetal position for a few moments. Taking your time to return to a seat. Time for home. Winter is the time for comfort, for good food and warmth, for the touch of a friendly hand or a talk beside the fire. It is the time for home. I will enjoy winter, getting together with those I love, whether that be this year in person or virtually, and smiling at their bright faces. I greatly appreciate you making this time for yourself each week. Whether you're live with me right now or you've hit play today, either way, you made yourself a priority in this crazy busy time of December. Thank you again for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Thank you guys so much.